You're watching Sports Force Extra on KTIV. Welcome back, folks. Well, we've seen what's available here in Iowa, a little bit of South Dakota, but now we're going to head across the border. The Laurel Concord Coleridge Bears, they were hosting the Homer Knights. Yeah, both teams sit at one and two on the season. In this game, it's a massive opportunity for one squad to get their season back to 500. Laurel, it's going to be the team that gets going first. An inside handoff here to Brayden Erweiler. That'll open up. He breaks to the outside and beats all the Knight defenders. It's 8 nothing Bears. Knights trying to cook on offense, but Connor Korth gets his paws on this one for the Bears. He's going to rumble on down to the one-yard line. That sets LCC up in good possession. By the way, that next play, it's Korth running directly through the teeth of the defense to put the Bears up 16 nothing. Bears defense holds on the next possession and tell you what they nearly block this punt but oh look out the returner fumbles the ball can't grab it cleanly Steve Harris falls on top of it for Homer but Laurel would cruise to a comfortable 68 to 15 victory another all Siouxland matchup this time it's Tri-County Northeast at Wakefield Trojans are going to be searching for their first win this year. Here we go. They're now searching for their first win this year. This play right here kept them in this game early. A pump from the QB. A long bomb. This is going to Anthony Valenzuela. That keeps the drive alive. Thank you, buddy. A few plays later, they would punch it in. The QB sneak from Jacob Borg. Closing the gap on the scoreboard to the second half now. The Trojans set to kick the field goal, but it's blocked by the Wolfpack. Brian Isom scoops it up, returns it to the far side of the field, and the Pack are just feasting now. They would take the turnover and turn it into a quick touchdown on the run from Michael Dickens to extend their lead. And the Wolfpack go on to win this one 52-41. to Sports Force's Irvin Doman was at this game. He joins us now live from Wakefield with the recap. Irvin. Well, thank you, Amber, and it may only be mid-September, but that scoreboard lit up like a Christmas tree tonight, and that's a combination of a few things. Great athletes making great plays on the field, and the coaches calling great plays to put their athletes in positions, but one athlete was in prime position to seal this game with under a minute left. And then on that interception, I mean, that's what we just kept saying. We need to play. We need to play, and... Playmakers make plays, and Brian Isom, number 11, got that pick um, to seal the deal, and I'm, I'm happy for him. And this team said they're trying to take it week by week, but the Wolfpack, well, they got their hands full with Homer, who's trying to bounce back from a 1-3 and three start next Friday. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, thank you very much, everyone. We'll head out to MMCRU, taking on South O'Brien and Marcus halfway through the second quarter. Wolverines roll the dice on fourth down, just as Ferk floats one down the sideline for Derek Paulson. He hauls in the pass. A couple plays later, Ferk on the QB keeper gets in for the score. Takes some deliberating, but the touchdown count. South O'Brien leads seven to or cut the lead, cuts the lead down seven to six. MCRU's Jonah Peterson says, "Anything I can, you can do. I can do better." He scores on a one-yard keeper as well to get the lead back up to seven. Next possession, rolls at the goal line again. This time they give to Mason Roberts. He stopped at the line, but Michael Peterson just yanks his teammate into the promised land for six more. This one's in a lightning delay. Royals leading 27 to 14. Our very own Connor Trett is out there at the game. Connor. Are you staying dry out there, Marcus? Well, J well, Jason, can't say that I am staying dry out here, Marcus. I'm for some reason wearing the one jacket I own that doesn't have a hood. I don't know why I did that. But actually, right now, the referees are on the field deliberating on whether or not this game is going to keep going on. And they had delayed this at 9 o'clock, and they have pushed it back and back until right now they're deliberating. But you know what? Spirits are still high out here because we got these guys back here. Those four guys, they have not left their seats here in the stands. They've been the life of the party out here in Marcus. Honestly, even though the rain's coming down and the game's been delayed, they actually just announced over the PA that they will resume play here in Marcus. Jason, Amber, back to you. All right, thanks for the update, Connor. Now over to Elk Point, Jefferson host of McCook Central at the start of the third. Keaton Gale hands it off to Carson Timmons, who runs out right, squeezing into the end zone. That puts the score at 14-8. to eight. Over to the Cougars. Lane 
Deuch is pressured and tries to throw, but Keaton Gale's right there to get the interception. Gale stays on his feet, gets up field a little bit before he's finally brought down. Later on, here's Gale weaving through the middle, dodging left and right here. He brings in another touchdown. EPJ goes on to win this one, 36 to eight. All righty, over to Vermillion. They're hosting the three and O. West Central, right off the top, West Central's Caden Alfson throws to Crew Hire, who's right there in the end zone. It's going to make the score 8 0. Then a little later on, Alfson is going to hand off here to Chet Carta. He battles his way in for the touchdown. That's going to extend the lead even further 16 0. And West Central just keep going when Alfson hands off to Jude Jarring. He's going to bring the ball to the edge of the end zone. In once more, West Central goes on to win this one, 41 to seven. Pierre and Yankton here. Pierre is gonna get the opening drive, marching downfield here, but Cade Kaiser's pass is picked off by Bodie Thurman. He takes it a long ways back into Pierre territory. That'll set up the Bucks in the red zone here. It's gonna be Lucas Kampchoff. Rolling out, finding Austin Goble, making the push for six. Yankton strikes first, it's seven nothing. But Pierre's defense stood up after that. It's Kampshoff again, looking to pass here, but he's sacked way back by Lucas Chamberlain. Pierre's gonna cook it in the second half. They win 27-14 to stay undefeated. Time now, folks, for one of the best parts of the night. Fan Force, where we get to see how you we're all enjoying these games tonight. Amber, what do we got? All right, well, first up, we have this picture sent in from Andrea Held. She says, this is Chloe and Kuiper. They're the Hinton Blackhawks super fans. Great photo there. Love the school spirit. And next, here's another photo from Tiffany Harper. They're out there supporting South O'Brien tonight. Love to see it. And don't forget, if you catch one of those Sports Force mini footballs, snap a pic, send it to connect at KTIV.com. Well, football is not the only game going on tonight. There was volleyball on the menu and a good one. Number three, Wayne State. They were hosting number one, Concordia St. Paul. Yeah, I tell you what, the Golden Bears ended up on top last time they met, and that was the Wildcats' only loss of the season. Let's get right into it. The fans, they brought the energy tonight out in Wayne, America, and the Wildcats came out swinging with Taya Beller coming in from the middle for the slam, and Wayne State wins the first set, 25 to 19. Second set, back and forth battle. Here's Jamie Gumptill getting the set and coming around the corner, hitting down the line for the kill. Wildcats kept fighting and slipped by, taking the set with a net violation here out of the Golden Bears. That seals the deal, 28 to 26 in the second set. Third set. Wayne State defenders at the net, let nothing by it by him. Taylor, Bunger, and Beller get the block. That totals 11 on the Knights for the Cat Wildcats. They get revenge and sweep the Golden Bears. 3 nothing. We wanted to go for it. We talked about going for it with our serve, you know, being fierce with our serve, getting after it behind the service line. And they broke down a little bit compared to what they did on Saturday, which, you know, when teams are out of system, it changes the game of volleyball immensely. So um, it was really nice to see a score in transition. Um, and, and we had some players step up. The Wildcats host their next game on Tuesday, September 19th, as they face the Shadron State Eagles. This is Parker and Aiden. We're from Kingsley Pearson, and Sports Force will be right back. Yeah. 